Hey folks, welcome back. So the other half of my order from Z-Cube has arrived, but I'm really looking forward to this other half of the order. I vaguely remember what was in the first one, uh, so I have a kind of idea what's coming in this half, but uh, there'll be definitely be some surprises. I've uh, intentionally chosen not to remind myself of what was in the order by checking through my email so I could uh, kind of be surprised and delighted by whatever comes out of this box. So let's go ahead and open it up, see what we got. What do we have? Everything is very nicely packed as per usual from ZQ. There we go. Here's our first suspect. We've got, uh, oh, it is a Fisher Cube. This is from Chi E, more than a professional speed cube, it says. Um, we've got Matt's Valk on the side. I don't know if he's ever time to solve on a Fisher Cube. I'm guessing probably not, <laughs> but never mind. He's a recognizable face, so why not have him on there? And there we go. This is a Chi E item, so of course the turning is exceptionally good. A little bit catchy. Um, but when held nice and tight, moves perfectly. Uh, this is a Fisher Cube, so the cuts are at a 45 degree angle from where they would normally be. So effectively what that means is if you look at the cube this way, uh, these would normally be our edge pieces, but they're now on the corners, which means uh, they have an additional color there to deal with. And what would be our edges, uh, or our corners rather, are now edges. And they just have uh, one color on the side here. So there's going to be some interesting weirdness happening from that. And of course, uh, because of this odd cut pattern, we will get some shape shifting as we mess around with this puzzle, which is cool. Uh, I'm always a fan of... Ooh, have I already scrambled it? No, I haven't. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, this is a classic modification made by Tony Fisher, as suggested by the name. Um, and yet, to my shame, I had no Fisher cubes in my collection until this order from Z-Cube. So I'm really glad to have the original classic uh, remade in chi -E's inimitable style. Um, as you probably worked out by now, I'm a huge fan of so-called non WCA puzzles, uh, twisty puzzles which are made by the speed cubing companies because usually they are a joy to use and that's not always the case with companies like uh, our friends MF8 or Diane, for example. So really looking forward to this. That's the Fisher Cube. Next up, we've got this guy, another chi -E monstrosity. Again, not just a professional speed cube, apparently. This time we have, oh, it's Matt's Falk again. Okay. Uh, and you can see from the picture here that what we have is an axis cube. I don't actually know much about this shape modification. Uh, I know, of course, it's based on a 3x3. Three three. Um, they've done something odd with the cuts here. So I feel like it's kind of been shifted in three-dimensional space, whereas with the Fisher cube, we just took uh, the cuts on one plane and rotated them. I think here we've taken, if we took those cuts through the 3D surface and rotated that entire set of cuts, then we would end up with this uh, axis cube. So I think in order to do some turns, I've got to line this up differently. Not sure how precisely, maybe well, we can do that. That's cool. So immediately we're into some crazy shape-shifting territory here. That's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to spend some time with this, work out how it's actually supposed to turn because this is all brand new to me. Uh, if we go this way, okay, we've got a slice layer here. So where does that line up? I guess not there, not there, not there, here? Maybe? Does that turn? No, it doesn't turn. Interesting. Okay, yeah, really don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> so I, I apologize for that. Uh... Okay, so this bit turns, this bit turns, gosh, I'm really confused here. Okay, what about like this? No. Maybe this? No. How do I, guys, how do I scramble this? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm not going to waste any more of your time on this. Uh, I'll come back and do another video on this because uh, I'm ashamed of my cluelessness here. But that is the Axis Cube. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I know it's going to look crazy once I do figure out how it's supposed to operate and uh, scramble it. 
So again, looking forward to that. Um, as per usual with GE, nice stickerless shades. Everything moves very smoothly. Uh, no complaints at all on the functionality front, which is really the main thing to me when you're talking about uh, twisty puzzles. They need to twist. Clues in the name. All right, what do we got here? Ooh, we got a pyramid. So this, oh, now we have Kevin Urich on the side. He is the designer of this puzzle. This is the ancient coin pyraminx. See a picture of it there. Uh, still more than professional speed cube. So it's good to know we're still at this top level of achievement here. Oh, this one comes with a manual. That's fun. So this one, you've got uh, faces with these rotating bits here. Move nice and smooth. Uh, and we have those on every face of this tetrahedron. And then once they're lined up appropriately, so all the cuts on the faces line up uh, with these bits here, then we can twist the corners and then mix these guys up like so. Um, so, I don't think this is going to be very difficult to solve at all. Um, you know, it should be pretty easy to set up uh, three cycles to move these chunks around any which way you like. Um, and since we only have these corner cuts, which are very shallow, I don't think it's going to be very hard to solve. But I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of having puzzles around that are just, you know, that are a bit easy. Just something relaxing to do with your hands. You know, get yourself in the mood maybe to tackle a larger puzzle. So this will definitely fill that role for me. It's got a nice uh, clicky mechanism here. I'm assuming that's ball bearings or something similar. Feels nice and satisfying. Um, and again, everything as per usual with GE, uh, the functionality is really superb. So very happy with that. Um, all of these puzzles, by the way, were ridiculously cheap on Z-Cube, something like 2 or $3 a pop. Uh, so really uh, an easy recommendation if any of these puzzles do interest you. So that is the ancient coin pyraminx. We're motoring through here. Here's another pyramid. This is again by, uh, I think this is also by, oh no, this is Yu Kang Wu. Okay, I thought it was Kevin Urich again. Um, but we're back to Matt's Volk. We don't have Kevin on this one, sadly. Um, now this puzzle is another tetrahedron but it is now an edge turning puzzle so as you can see we have this lovely uh, leaf kind of pattern um, i believe this is called uh, the clover pyraminx generally um, and it is an edge turner so you can see um, but we've got centers on this one now my understanding i kind of got spoiled on this puzzle by looking at some videos recently uh, that this is some kind of three by three shape mod uh, essentially. So that is quite intriguing. Um, I'm not sure. Can I turn when these are partially? I, I imagine there must be a way to do some kind of shape shift. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So we can take these chunks out uh, and then continue on with other turns like so. And that's already a bit terrifying. So that's pretty cool. Um, I find that when I know something is a three by three shape mod, that doesn't necessarily make it easy to solve. Um, you know, you really have to change your perspective. There'll often be different algorithms, different techniques you need to use than what you might be accustomed to and have burned into your brain from the standard three by three. Uh, so that's really fun. And, and you know, that's why I like things like the Master Morphix puzzles. You know, they, they take something you know and they twist it into a form where you kind of know what you're doing and yet you don't. Uh, and that's the fun of these kind of puzzles. So I'm really looking forward to trying to unravel this one. Um, the turning is actually excellent. This is this is really great. Um, again, I've gone for stickerless. I always do when given the option because once I master a puzzle, I tend to solve it billions and billions of times. Um, and I just don't like dealing with sticker maintenance. And uh, particularly on something like this, you know, where uh, you're touching the surface of the puzzle in a large extent with each turn, you know, you're shape-shifting things all over the place. I think uh, I tend to have bad luck with uh, stickered puzzles in those kinds of circumstances. So I try to avoid uh, stickered puzzles with, uh, you know, these kind of complex turning mechanisms. Although sometimes you can't, uh, depending on the manufacturer. But GE these days is giving us a heaping helping of really good stickerless puzzles that are not just your standard speed cubes, more than a professional speed cube. There it is. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of that. 
All right, so that's the Clover Pyramid or Pyraminx. What else we got in here? More stuff. There we go. Another pyramid. This, however, is from YJ. I have it upside down. There we go. <laughs> it says Jin Z Ta Cube. And this, uh, I've forgotten what the name of it is. But this is quite a popular puzzle. I've seen it on Speed Cube Review, some other big channels like that. Uh, this is another edge turning. Oh no, this is a corner turning one. Okay, my mistake. This is a corner turning pyramid, but you can see it has these uh, crazy circles on it, which we can rotate independently like that if we so choose. And then you can turn the corners. Oh, and you can turn, of course, like a pyramid, you can treat it as a face turner as well by going like so. Uh, but really, it's a corner turner. Those are the axes around which we're moving our pieces. So I think this is going to be much more uh, challenging than, say, the ancient coin pyramid over here, uh, even though both of them have this kind of rotatey face action going on, uh, I do feel that this is going to offer a lot more challenge because there are more cuts. Um, the cuts are deep as well. We're going deep into the center of the circle, whereas on the ancient coin pyramid, as you remember, we just had this little slice up here at the top. Uh, we were changing with each turn, but here, there's a lot more uh, that can be scrambled effectively. So this should be an interesting little challenge. I don't think it's going to be super hard, um, but I'm looking forward to it. I've been wanting to get this one for a while. And as per usual, once I started, um, you know, stealing myself to spend some money at Z-Cube, uh, I, I thought, you know what? Some of these puzzles are just so inexpensive. They've been on my wish list. So let's just grab a whole bunch. Uh, and I think even if you buy this from somewhere and that's not Z-Cube, um, you know, somewhere domestic to you. I think the prices are very reasonable uh, for all these puzzles, in fact. So these will go happily into the Cheap and Cheerful series. Um, but yeah, I'm particularly looking forward to this one. It has a nice feel to it. A little bit of a clicky action to it. I'm presuming, again, we've got some kind of ball bearings in here. You can hear that noise. Uh, but it moves beautifully smoothly. Very satisfying to turn. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be fun, I think. Let's see what happens if we... Okay, so that cut doesn't line up, but this one does. And we can do like that. Yeah, and we start getting some fun stuff happening already. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's get it back before I scramble it too early. Uh, but yeah, so this... Uh, now, I'm, I'm getting confused here because I think... I thought this one was the Clover Pyraminx... And I'm trying to remember now what this one is. In, on on Z-Cube, I believe it's called the Leaf Tetrahedron. Something like that. So we'll we'll call it that. It's the Leaf Tetrahedron. Uh, I'll put the proper names and links and stuff in the description anyway, so you know what you're getting into. Okay, so let's put that guy over here. And what do we got next? Pull out some packed materials. Aha! I was looking forward to this one as well. So this is... A Skube mod from Moyu. This is their logo up here. Um, this is called the Container Puzzle. There you go. By Jean-Claude Constantine and Tony Fisher. So again, I think we've got the Fisher modification idea going on here where we change the directionality of the cuts in the puzzle. So this is actually a Skube, uh, but with an oblong shape. And then it turns in this sort of crazy way, and we end up immediately with very confusing stuff going on. Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> All the people I've seen trying to solve this have gotten very confused, and I think I can immediately see why. First of all, the way it moves is just some weird, wild stuff. Uh, you know, it, it, it gets pretty wonky straight away. But also, uh, I can imagine there's a lot of weird potential parity issues, parodies of false equivocation. Uh, because, you know, these two pieces here look identical. Um, but when you when you look underneath, they've actually got different colors here on the bottom. You know, I don't, I'm not sure. I guess these two are equivalent right here. But yeah, I can imagine that you could easily get things swapped around in such a way that it's really hard to uh, get things in the orientation and location that you need without screwing everything else up. I imagine that you could use some of the basics of skew solving uh, to get you pretty far through this, but there's going to come a point where you're going to have 
configurations that are just not possible on a normal skew. Um, and some pieces are going to behaving, be behaving as different types of pieces than what you're accustomed to. So I guess, I think it's so strange. So maybe, I guess these would be centers, but then the other four colors, they're not centers. They've been split here. We've got these edges, these kind of, I guess those are centers now because they have no other colors on them. They're just orange here. So two edges and two centers on these faces, and then one yellow piece and one white piece. Yeah, I'm, I'm already confused. Uh, but as predict predictable from Moyu, it moves great. Uh, it looks really nice. It's quite uh, toyetic in appearance, in a sense, because it's very cute, kind of rounded. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this one. I think it's going to give me a proper challenge, in particular because... Um, you know, I'm pretty accustomed to using a standard skew. Um, I do a lot of skew speed solving. It's very enjoyable for me, so uh, plenty of opportunities for me to get confused here. <laughs> um, so yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting. Um, let's see here. How can I? Yeah, there we go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. So that is the. Uh, container puzzle from Moyu. Very exciting. All right. Now, on the top of the pile here, we have something very large, but I'll save that for the end. Put that to the side over here. What else we got here? Aha, so this is again from Chi, which you can probably tell from the box. Back to Matt's Volk again. Um, there's no design credits on here, but I believe that the original version of this was probably another Fisher uh, creation. So this is similar to the Fisher Cube in that, you know, we've taken a standard 3 by 3 we've taken the cuts uh, on this plane going through the cube that way, and we've shifted them. However, unlike the Fisher Cube, which is here, so here we've shifted the cuts in such a way that, you know, they're, they're kind of uh, symmetrical, right? Here they're not symmetrical anymore. So we have uh, each of these pieces now will have a particular orientation that they need to be in. And probably there's other ramifications of this too that I don't, I'm just not really aware of at this point. Um, and again, we're going to get some wild and wacky shape shifting, which is cool. Very excited about that. Uh, and of course, the movement is fantastic. No complaints with that. Now, if I do a bit of this. Yeah, so this puzzle is known as the windmill cube, and this is why. Uh, if I do that simple maneuver, it looks like a lovely pinwheel or windmill, which is very cool. Uh, yeah, so that's the windmill cube, a variation of the Fisher cube. I imagine that the solving strategies will be similar, but there will be some complications given that uh, the pieces now have additional different shapes and will need to uh, be located in one particular place. Um, I guess that might be the case with this as well, though. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know, the perils of unboxing. I haven't done my background research because I forgot what was in the box. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about these guys. So another one to look forward to for the Cheap and Cheerful series. Probably I'll cover these both in the same video because they are closely related. Uh, what else we got? All right. Uh, oh, yes, another classic that I was ashamed to not have in my collection this is from YJ. It says Jingmian Cube, um, but we know it as the Mirror Cube. So let me just extract it here. Uh, it says using instruction of Mirror Magic Cube. Great. Okay. Try and not use that. Uh, so the Mirror Cube is a 3x3, three three, except, of course, uh, our axes of rotation are all wonky here, and the pieces are different sizes and shapes. Uh, but the colors are all the same. So we're solving by shape and not by color. A lot of people love the mirror cube. I've never had one, so I can't really judge as of yet. Uh, movement is great, as you would expect. Um, as I said in the other video, I think these days, you know, there's so many good cheap 3x3 mechanisms out there. It's a, you know, it's a solved problem. So even though this cube costs something ridiculous like $1.25, uh, the movement is really nice and smooth. So no problems there. Um, YJ is also a reliable company. Uh, I've enjoyed all the cubes I've, I've purchased from them so far, and uh, this one seems to be no exception. Uh, there's a little bit of factory scuzz on here. Maybe the 
stickers weren't quite cut perfectly. There's a little bit. Oh no, it seems seems to have resolved it. Um, and I got the gold color. There was a silver option for the stickers as well, but I thought the gold was a little bit more appealing. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I, I've seen some arguments that this could be included as a World Cubing Association event. Um, I think it's also neat that, you know, this is a puzzle kind of made for blind solving, I guess. Since you're solving purely by shape, uh, you don't really need to look at any colors or anything because there aren't any. It's just one. So, you know, it's a it's a good fit for, for the blind solvers among us. Uh, yeah, and it, it does make pretty appealing visuals. Um, and I do like that shiny gold stickering. Very nice. Now, there's another variant of the 3x3 mirror puzzle, which is available from Moyu. I think they call it the Mirror Cube S. Um, that one has, uh, instead of, you know, on this top face here, for example, we have uh, three different rows. Each piece on each row has a different size, uh, and the size of each row is decreasing as you move down here. I believe on the Mirror Cube S, uh, these, these cuts are still uneven going that way. Uh, but they're even going this way. So, like, these three pieces would be kind of the same. Um, and I'm I'm guessing that would make it easier because you'd have pieces that were basically interchangeable. So uh, I was advised not to get that, but to get this one, which is kind of the proper mirror puzzle. Uh, but I thought I should just make you aware that there is that option um, if you want kind of an easier start on these sort of puzzles. You could get the Mirror Cube S um, there's also about a million different uh, manufacturers making the Mirror Cube. So I got the YJ one. Of course, there's MoYu ones of two different varieties that I've mentioned. Then you've got Shang Show, um, you know, tons of options. And some of them don't have stickers. They just have, you know, colored plastic. I mean, you could take the stickers off of this as well. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, but yeah, another basic puzzle that should have been in my collection from the beginning, really. But uh, I only just picked up now. So good one to uh, to have. I can rest easy that I've got a mirror cube in my collection at last. This doesn't want to go in there. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, so is that everything? That might be everything. Okay, it's just a receipt. Okay, so we're down to the last puzzle, which is the monster of the bunch. This is from MF8. So this is the uh, multi cube dodecahedron, I believe. This is the uh, relative to the crystal dreidel that I showed you in the last video. They came out r r roughly the same time. Both are multi-puzzles where the inner puzzle is actually a Pyramid's crystal, which you can see here. So excuse me for a moment, this is going to be a bit noisy. So, now once again, I was excited about these guys because uh, these are pentultimate puzzles which until now were not available in mass-produced form with a shells-based mechanism. But these two, uh, meaning this one and the crystal dreidel, are using a proper shells mechanism now, so that's exciting. Um, and wow, they actually move great. This is really nice. It's actually out of the box. It's much smoother than the crystal dreidel, uh, so that's really promising already. Now, Super Antonio Vivaldi did a video uh, solve of this, I believe, which was fairly recent. You can go check his channel if you want to see that. Um, I'm going to try and avoid watching those. I did watch uh, an intro video where he was talking about this puzzle. And ha, ah, there we go. So there's a bandaging element to this, right? So you can see uh, when I was moving these other, some of these other axes, um, oops. then when I was doing these turns, so the inner pyramid crystal is, is splitting in half as well along that axis, right? All the way along here. Okay, but that's not the case on every axis of this puzzle. If I bring it back and then turn here, you can see that actually um, the inner pyramid crystal is not doing anything to these faces, but it's turning these faces. So it, it, I imagine that's going to make things proper strange. <laughs> I don't know uh, how to address that, really. I, I mean, obviously, Super Antonio Vivaldi can do it, but he is a much better solver than I am. Uh, with many more years of experience, so I've got a lot to learn. Um, certainly, I will give it my best. Um, yeah, that's really cool. I mean, the movement is actually really good. Um, it's, it's. I mean, there's some catchiness here. Um, definitely want to sort of take it easy with this until you break it in a bit. But, I mean, this is going to be no problem to scramble and solve, which is fantastic. 
Um, I still haven't uploaded my video about the Void Master Pent Ultimate, but I will give you the preview again and say do not ever buy it, ever. It's bad. Um, if you want to have a Pent Ultimate to solve, this is a normal Pent Ultimate with the Pyraminx Crystal inside. The Crystal Dreidel is a Master Pent Ultimate uh, minus the edge pieces, I believe, um, plus Pyraminx Crystal inside. You could just ignore the inside and solve the outers, and then you've got yourself a Pent Ultimate and a Master Pent Ultimate problem solved. Um, but, you know, of course, you've got this whole interior puzzle, which adds another dimension to the solve. Yeah, see, that is strange. So, uh, a little bit catchy when I turn it away from me for some reason, but I think that will clear up in time. So, as you could, you probably could see there, but when I was uh, turning around this orange face, when I turn this axis, none of these bits are changing. It's only on the left side. But when I rotate like this, then suddenly I'm changing these faces. Okay, yeah, so there's going to be some weird, wild stuff to learn here. Um, if I have one complaint, it's that these corner pieces are a bit rattly. They don't feel like they're going to come out at all, uh, which is perfectly fine. If they just make a funny noise, it's no problem. Um, and there is a, this catchiness when I try to rotate the face away from me. Um, but again, I, th I think, you know, with some breaking in some lube, uh, I, I really don't think I'm going to have any major complaints about this. I mean, this is pretty, for an MF8 puzzle of this complexity, I mean, this is effortless turning, really. I'm, I'm very impressed. The crystal dreidel, I'm still working on. It needs more breaking in. Uh, I'm still really happy with it, but I mean, it, it's nothing like as good as this, uh, you know, right out of the box. You know, I'm tempted to just dive right into this thing. Uh, I'm not going to do that because, as per usual, I like to take the solved puzzle, think on it, play with it cautiously, you know, develop some solve strategies in my head, try some algorithms, and then dive into it. I'm very methodical that way. Um, I've only been solving for a brief time, so I've got a lot to learn, and I'm trying not to uh, frustrate myself by getting too deep into a solve without knowing what I'm doing. Um... But, I mean, this just feels really good. Uh, I think these two each cost me a little bit over $20 a piece for this one. And something similar for the Crystal Dreidel. So, you know, for a puzzle that is complex as this with this many moving parts, uh, you know, frankly, I think that's a bargain. Um, certainly substantially less than it would be to buy uh, domestically here in the UK. Of course, you have to pay then for shipping and waiting for customs clearance and all that. But, uh, you know, in the end, you end up with these puzzles at a really nice price, uh, even if you factor in shipping and stuff. So I'm, I'm really, really happy. Um, but wow, I mean, I got to hand it to MF8. You know, they did a horrible thing to the puzzle and to the whole community by releasing that Master Void Pentultimate in the state that it was in. Uh, but these two puzzles, this and the Crystal Dreidel, uh, are really, you know, a redemption story in my mind. Uh, this is really, really nice. Great. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought this video would be shorter. I was trying to move quickly, but in fact, it's even longer than the first one. So I can only apologize for that. Um, in both cases, I'm struggling a little bit with the lighting in my place recently. Um, the We're in a, a period of the year where, you know, the days are getting longer and I'm kind of misjudging when I'm filming things and the lighting I'm putting around. So I apologize. Visibility is not what it could be. But, you know, I'm really doing this on a super shoestring budget. What little budget I have is going on these puzzles. <laughs> so I hope you can you can bear with me uh, until at some point, hopefully, I'll get, you know, proper camera and better lighting and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I'm super excited about these. In particular, this guy, even more happy with this than the Crystal Dreidel, which is a really, really great thing to be able to say. Um, the classics here, the Fisher and the Windmill Cube, Really looking forward to, to getting into these. Uh, I think that will help me with my general shape mod solving abilities overall, which will be really nice. Definitely will do a uh, cheap and cheerful on those guys as a pair. All these pyraminxes are exciting to me, but particularly this guy. Um, I like circle puzzles, and this is a circle tetrahedron uh, with a really nice visual aspect to it. Um, the turning is great, so that'll be a nice one as well. Um, and the container puzzle. I think is going to be uh, particularly good for me as a Scube fan. Definitely going to be a challenge. Definitely going to mess my mind up. So I'm looking forward to that. But all these, really, I'm really pleased with. Um, you can see like 80% of this haul is from GE. 
Um, and what wasn't from GE is from YJ, <laughs> except for this one puzzle. So, um, you know, these are companies that I know I can rely on. Um, and when a company does not disappoint me with their puzzles, I tend to go back again and again and again. So, uh, yeah, I hope you got something out of that. Let me know if there's particular puzzles in this haul and the first one that you really want to hear more about, um, see some solved videos, stuff like that. I saw somebody requested a tutorial on the YJ Star Barrel. So I am planning to do a video of that and the Ready Barrel from Moyu. So I'll do a kind of barrel-themed video. Um, I may not do like a really detailed tutorial because honestly, I don't think you need it. Um, but I will do uh, example solves and I'll talk about um, the last layer stuff you may need to do for the Star Barrel. So hopefully that'll help some of you out there. Um, but if you've got other puzzles in the mix that you want to hear more about or other puzzles that you know I have that you're struggling with, let me know and I'll try and cover those. Um, as always, I've been real busy, but uh, I will try my best to uh, to put out some content that you guys will like. Um, and uh, yeah, if you do like it, tell your friends, you know, get them to subscribe and, and come check out some of the videos. Um, I really enjoy doing these when I have the time. And, uh, you know, the more interest that we get popping off in the comments and the more ideas I get for new videos. So that'd be really great to see. Anyway, hope you all are well and healthy. Um, things are getting a bit hectic here on the European continent of late, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep things under control. Um, and so please stay safe. Uh, take care of yourself, your family, your friends, your dogs, your cats, everything. Um, and let me know what you're up to in the puzzling world. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, take care. Bye-bye.